This is the same strand that I have from the 45 gallon tank. The Shop of Horror, that is the metallic green and purple one. Those kind of clam seems to like my inappropriate tank a little bit more. But these two guys I'm really, really happy with. And I was gonna do a whole video on product that I bought so you don't have to. Hey, what's up reverse and my dear friends. Before we begin today, I wanna make a quick announcement. As of right now, I am gonna pause on the weekly video upload. There are a couple reasons. As Leon grows older and older, I find that I want to spend a little bit more time with him more and more as he become more coherent and demand my time, which I gladly give to him. But it kind of competes with the whole video shooting, video editing. And the second point that really pushed me towards no more weekly video is the fact that there is not a lot of things changing in the 145 gallon tank now. I feel like for the most part, everything is set up, ready to go. Now I'm just watching the corals grow. I do not want to force contents. I don't want to stick my hand in the tank when I don't want to. Even with uh, two reef tank, I feel like I kind of need to force content sometimes, meaning that there's certain things I may wait a couple more weeks if I do not need to film. And that is really not the way I want to reef. The goal of this channel is to document myself as a reef keeper, not a content creator. So I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse and with less things to talk about and less time to really brainstorm and do other topical things, I feel like the best thing is just kind of step away from the weekly video and as I get content, I'll push it out. Now, of course, I expect YouTube to penalize me in terms of not pushing the video out as much as before, which is fine. If I may be honest, if I spend the time to put a reef tank together, of course, I'll probably show it off to anybody who is interested in seeing it. And of course, if I spend the time to cut the videos together, I would love for you guys to see the video as well. So I have never asked anybody to do this, but because there's not gonna be a regularly scheduled release anymore, it's more important than ever now to hit that little bell so you know when the next video is gonna drop. Man, that was awkward saying it. I believe next weekend is actually gonna be the first Sunday that I'm gonna miss a video upload, and that's for good reason. Uh, October 10th is Emily's birthday, so when you're watching this right now, most likely we are in Cancun, kind of like snorkeling or whatnot. I'm just chilling by the pool, I think. It has been two years since I take an airplane flight, and that scared the heck out of me. We got all the COVID tests lined up to make sure we're 100% safe going there and coming back, so, uh, should be a nice little break. I know you guys are gonna miss my weekly ramble, so this video, we're going back to the old school where I'm just gonna go through my tank and just talk and tell you what happened to the tank. There are actually two mysteries I'm trying to solve in this tank right now. I'm hoping that maybe you guys can help me with at least one of them. Uh, without further ado, let's go. All right, reefers, hope you're ready. This one's gonna be a long one. I'm gonna give you a really detailed update on how the tank is doing as a snapshot. So the next time when you see a video, I feel like the tank probably would have changed quite a bit. Where shall we start? Why don't we start from here since we're in this cluster? So back there is my rose bubble tip anemone with my pair of clownfish. This pair of clownfish is about five and a half, six years. And these were from CM Reef and I got them from a local fish store, Blue Ribbon Aquatics. These are the Da Vinci clowns. I realized that I didn't really talk too much about the rose bubble tip anemone in this tank, but this is the same strand that I have from the 45 gallon tank. And I got a couple friends locally that have uh, this strand as well. It's uh, just a really beautiful rose bubble tip anemone. Some people say that it may be Black Widow, but I think it's just a uh, normal, normal LBTA. But it's been really hardy, uh, gets a large size. Whenever there's like uh, some kind of swings, it just split. Uh, as you can see, during a large nutrient swing, it finally split in two. Now I got two giant ones. And these guys are probably measuring, uh, I think the big one is almost a foot in diameter, maybe like 10 and a half, 11 inches. And the one on the right is a little bit smaller, but uh, they're all decently sized. So one interesting thing about this tank is that um, one of the big reason I upgraded to a larger tank after my 45 gallon cube tank leaked is because I really want to provide these clownfish with a larger home to see if they um, live differently. Because in the 45 gallon tank, they're always in the anemone, don't really venture out. So I was like, all right, let me get a larger tank, uh, mainly for these guys. Because once again, fish, I like a lot more, or care a lot more than corals. To me, they're really pets. And I want to provide them with a larger home because they've been with me so, for so long. But what do you know? They pretty much just stick around the anemone. So for the most part, I'll see the clowns on this side of the tank. They've barely ventured out to that side. So it's all kind of like wasted space. Uh, if it's if we're talking about the clownfish right there. However, they did get larger. I feel like the uh, the male clown is uh, how the size of the female when it was in the 45 and the uh, female clowns did not actually get too much larger, maybe a little bit, but the male definitely caught up in size in terms of uh, uh, comparing to the female ones. I have been toying with the idea of adding a um, Colorado Sunburst anemone 
to this tank right here. Uh, a lot of people say that that's a big no-no. One of those um, quote unquote collector and enemy versus um, the more common enemy because they have chemical warfare. I read somewhere that if, um, for example, if I were to do it, if I keep the CSB in a different tank and just swap water between the two tanks every week, right? So they get used to each other's chemical signal or whatever in the water, it may be doable. So I am toying with the idea, um, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, it's a, it's a, big, it's a big risk for sure. If you guys have any experience with uh, mixing like CSB or Chicago Sunburst with uh, standard LBTA, uh, these are well, these are not wild. These are not the wild ones. These uh, have been in captivity for a long time. I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, from the anatomy, let's talk about the zoas. Now, here's one of the mysteries that I'm hoping that maybe one of you guys may know. So the zoas has been temperamental. That's the best way I can put it. So right now you see a lot of them are decently open, but certain ones they close more and more during the day. For example, the yellow brick road. Right now in the morning, um, most of them are open, right? Even though not, not like completely fully, but they are open. But by the end of the day, a lot of them are closed up. It's the strangest thing. Same thing with some of the rosters. We see some of the rosters start peeking out. It's doing a lot better already compared to maybe uh, three weeks ago. But by the end of the day, a lot more of them closes up. It's the strangest thing. I wonder if it has anything to do with light intensity. So I try maybe like shorten, shortening the photo period a little bit or like gently ramp it down versus just uh, seven and a half hours like full blast. But that did not seem to cause any of the difference. So I really don't know what's going on. Is it, is it some food I fed? Is it the uh, testing fluid going back into the tank from Alcatronic? Is it the alkalinity dosing or the Kalkwasa dosing? I really don't know. So that's one of the big mystery and I'm just kind of observing. I wish I have an answer for you guys, but this is like an ongoing thing. All right, I'm gonna flex on you guys on my Zoas a little bit. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm gonna use my uh, top-down viewer just so that we get a better view. There are a couple of types that I really like. Um, you know that I don't care too much about name stuff. But um, some of the name stuff are uh, name stuff because they are beautiful. So there, there's reason for that. So there are a couple of zoas I really like in this tank right now. Um, first of all, there is the Little Shop of Horror. That is the metallic green and purple one right in the middle of the frame here, if I can center it. I got that from Lynn and it's been growing really, really well. It's putting out maybe like two polyps or so each month. So it's, it's decent, could be faster. Also really like the salted agave that I got from Remy. Uh, that's, I'm trying to center in the middle as well. It's not super happy. It's going through the same thing that the yellow brick road is. It's not completely open. It's the strangest thing. But that's another one I really like. Got a nice pattern and metallic color. There are some other things that I got mixed in here. Uh, the other one that I really like is, let's see, right there. Yeah, in the middle. So I think those are the space monsters. That's the purple center of the green skirt. Those are really beautiful as well, with um, nice chunky polyps. And the other one, other chaos. Well, you guys are all familiar with the other chaos, so no need to go over there, but it's in the middle of the frame as well. And then we get into some of the higher end Zoas that you cannot see from the top. Let me come from here. So that is a GMK, Grandmaster Kraken, if I remember right. Uh, I got two polyp, it grew from one. And supposedly each of this polyp get about $300 to $400 if you buy it online or locally it's about $150 where I am right now. So I got this uh, polyp from Lynn and uh, it's growing well. It doubled in <laughs> value already. Regardless of the valuation or name and whatnot, it's just a really cool and beautiful Zoas. And what I really like about it is how challenging it is. Uh, people are saying that they tend to randomly melt and they prefer lower light and lower flow. And with that reputation of it randomly melt, I was like, okay, challenge accepted. And so far it's been doing good and I'm crossing my fingers. And coming over here, we got a couple other uh, interesting Zoas that I got from Lynn as well. Um, one in particular I like is this. I think it's called Ecosphere. At least that may be the name if I remember right. Uh, it's just really, really bright with some random splotches and stuff like that. But this whole chunk is going back to Lynn uh, pretty soon, whenever I can find time to meet up with her. Because uh, she got another group of Zoas that she tried to color up and uh, we'll swap and we'll see how the color develop in my tank versus in hers. 
growth and how the growth rate is. Next to Zoa Garden, we got the Ganipora Garden, and that is another group of coral that has just been slowly recovering and growing without drawing too much attention to them. For example, this pink one was pretty much all bleached out and tiny, tiny little dot, maybe got like five or six polyps, and now it has really taken a foothold on that rock finally and started growing. That pink one back there, it was completely bleached and it was on its way out, but thankfully, uh, found a good spot, found a good nutrient level, and it is uh, fully recovered and started growing. The mint one, let's look from the top. It's, uh, it's healthy, but it is not doing as well as I hoped. Um, when it came, it was a little bit larger. It receded a little bit, it's bouncing back, but it could be better. But I can't complain, at least it's uh, surviving and putting out new polyps. And the one in the back, I think it's called the Rainbow Ganipora, let's look from the front. That one is doing really well. It just, it doesn't really extend that much, so I wasn't sure if it's doing well or not, but then it totally at least like triple in size at this point. So I'm really happy about that. And in terms of Ganipora, there are a couple other ones. For example, I think it's called the Date Light that I got from Joker's Corals, the one that um, the, the yellow tank is picking right next to. And really colored up. It came into my tank, browned out like a lot of corals are because my tank is a huge mess, but it's uh, bouncing back. And I also have this little chunk that I glued to the side of the rock that uh, not only survived, but started spreading. So I'm really excited to see what Ganipora that is. It's a really small chunk, but I know it's uh, some of those like uh, pretty ones out there. So really excited to see how it grows out. So that covers the Ganipora garden. I do have a Atheropora in the back that I got from Lynn. When it came, it was kind of like tannish in color, probably because of my tank, but it has totally colored up, changed to green, and seems to like where it is in the shade. Acant never seems to do well in my tank long term. I got that one from uh, Chevy in the back. It's uh, it's okay. It's not poofy. I don't think it likes this tank too much. Same thing with uh, this guy and this guy right here. It's not poofy. It's coloring up, but uh, maybe it's too much light. Uh, maybe I should share my tank parameter with you guys first. That's important. So in terms of light, the sand bed on average get about like 100 par to 120 or 130, depending on where. Uh, so that's about 100. The Zoas get about one, almost 200 here, 180. Right here is about 130. Euphilias over here gets about 110 to 120, so it's decent amounts. Going to the back, I think the um, LBTA gets almost 200 par. And the top of the rock work right there is 280. Back there is about 240, it actually drops a little bit. That size is a little bit higher. That one gets also about 280, similar to the top of the rock work. So there's like, um, the overall the tank in terms of par is kind of high for a uh, mixed reef. But uh, as I mentioned before, eventually this tank is gonna be mostly SPS as they grow out. I just want to make sure we have some like soft coral LPS to look at while the SPS grows out. Uh, so for the most part, the tank's par value is where I want them to be. Maybe even push it a little bit more for the ones in the back. So that is kind of like the overlook of how the par is arranged of this tank, which I probably should have shared in the beginning of this video. All right, so back to the Acans. For whatever reason, it's just never too happy in my tank. The Trip Lord and the other one that I got previously, they were happy in this tank, but I think chemical warfare happened with a lot of corals, took them out, and that's all she wrote. Uh, the new ones, long term, I don't think that that happy in this tank. So I think at some point I may just give them away locally um, so that they can find better home. And with that in mind, I also got some Blasto here. The Blasto is a different story. They love this tank. This one's the one I got for a long time. It has doubled in size. This one I got from Chevy as well. Uh, it was, it's kind of irritated a little bit because I was using a toothbrush to brush off all the um, hair algaes on the tile. But it's, uh, it's coming back and it seems happy. And Blasto, surprisingly, is one of the corals that I've zero issue with. In terms of LPS, I also have a nice, well, it's actually two chunks of kryptonite candy cane right there. It has been slowly multiplying. I was worried that it may be too bright there. It's pushing about 180 par, almost 200 par where the uh, kryptonite candy cane is. But it had just been growing. It has been growing really well. It's not really poofed up, which makes sense due to highlight. They don't need to increase the surface area. But if you look on the side, it's, it's really happy where it is. So I figure, you know what, let's just keep it there. And there's actually a small chunk that fell behind the rock that's a little bit tough to get to. If I really try, I probably could, but I see that the polyp seems to be doing well in the back. So I was like, all right, let's grow it in the shade. I want to see how it does. And uh, so there it is. We got like three and a half polyps of kryptonite candy cane under the rock work growing. It's been there for almost two months already. For Euphilius, I have a love-hate relationship. I feel like for the most parts, they're happy and they seems not to be too demanding. For example, Indo Go Torch 
has been, I almost want to say bulletproof, but I'm just going to jinx myself. But I've had a lot of luck with these uh, Indo torches. Same thing with uh, these guys right here. But certain ones, when they decide to go, they just go. And for example, this guy right here, this frog spawn is scaring me. The polyp is not fully extended. There's okay amount of currents. I can push a little bit more currents, but it's kind of retracted. So that makes me really uncomfortable. Because if you guys remember from the last video, I have a torch, um, the pink tip green torch. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorite torch. Overnight, it pretty essentially just kind of melts away, and it's it gutted me. And the main thing is that I don't. It's like, what happened? Uh, is it instability in the tank, which I was because I was doing too much things or too much thing happened? But at the same time, it's been like that for so long, and all of a sudden, it just went. So when I see stuff like this, where a polyp is not fully open for no particular reason, this scares me. <laughs> it's it's weird because like we always think like Euphilia should be one of the easiest coral or easier coral compared to say like SPS. But for me, it has been kind of temperamental in this tank. So that's also one of the reasons why I want to cut back on doing things in this tank. Because some of you guys hit the nail on the head that uh, I always is tweaking the tank. I should just let it settle and let it do its thing. And it's also one of the reasons why I want to cut back from doing video every week. Because if I don't do video every week, I don't, I'm not, I don't have that pressure to always uh, show something, right? I can just let it be. You know, I don't need to make a video. Nobody's, uh, nobody's pushing me. I can just, whenever something happens and I'll film it, if not, it's cool. Uh, I can go play some Warzone or whatnot. So that's one of the reasons I also want to step away from weekly video as well. But anyways, Euphilia's love-hate relationship. The ones that are doing well are doing absolutely gorgeous, fantastic, love it. Especially these uh, Indo torches, just loving life right now. And I love them for loving life in this tank. I appreciate you. But uh, scares me a little bit. I'm kind of nervous. Oh, by the way, I keep forgetting, we got more Euphilias in the back. So those hammer have been doing really well. Uh, that green hammer, I moved back there to recover. It looks like it's fully recovered and uh, just take up the entire spot and just enjoying life, which is excellent to see. I keep forgetting I have more Euphilias there. I keep just seeing here and here. Yeah, it's kind of like just blend it into the backdrop. Before we go to SPS, let's really quickly touch on these soft corals as well. I'm really enjoying the uh, orange mushroom that Chevy got me. Uh, so that's a piece of rock with a mix of like orange, red, and the green mushroom. In particular, I really like the orange one. Just got a nice texture and nice coloration. To the left, I got a couple letters that I'm trying to place. That one is from Joseph. That is a gorgeous clown letter, especially if I can get it a little bit higher. The polyp is bright white and that waving motion is just amazing. It's one of the my favorite letter back in the days as well. I actually had a 15 gallon extra tall tank with that as a centerpiece. Um, I was going to use it as a, for a seahorse tank. But then I got to college and then it's a little bit too busy. I just dropped the idea. But that letter has a special place in my heart. And up front, we got the green polyp version of it. To the left, I actually got another one right there as well. That one actually has white polyp, which is kind of interesting. And back here, this is that metallic green polyp toadstool that was on this rock here. Uh, basically, I just chip off the rock and just put it here for now. And leather, as you know, is going to be pissed off. And after a week or two, it's going to shed its mucus and it'll be happy again. Uh, but here's where I got to watch out for chemical warfare. And that's why I'm running a little bit of carbon, just in case. Another soft coral really like is the uh, OG bounce mushroom that I got from Daniel from New York. Uh, this guy has grown. The bubble has grown. And it's uh, more and more beautiful to look at every day. And I am not not sure where to put it. That's kind of like a temporary spot. I'm thinking, what if I move it up there, but I feel like it's probably too much light. We're hitting almost like 200 par at this tip right here. So I don't know, maybe I'll move it to that side. I don't know, maybe you'll see in the next video, which maybe in two or three weeks. To the right of the OG bounds, we got Remy's Whipping Willow. This guy has finally started growing. Um, it was in the mangrove tank for a very, very long time, just holding steady. But I think the uh, condition and at 135, it's much better for him. So it started growing, which is excellent. And you'll see I have random jawbreaker mushrooms all over the place, including back there. That guy is getting stung by the roastable pitman anemone. That's why it's kind of pissed off and melt, uh, kind of like melting downwards. So I'm waiting for that one to detach so I can put it somewhere. But yeah, you see I have some jawbreaker on the rock back there too. So jawbreaker mushroom is one of the mushrooms that I do not mind spreading simply because they're absolutely beautiful. Um, I wouldn't mind a whole tank full of these. Actually, maybe I would. That could be a too, good, too, uh, too much of a good thing. But for now, I am cool with the jawbreaker wherever they want to grow. Just multiply, my friends, multiply. 
The soft corals, I have already moved a lot of the Gorgonians up to the mangrove tank, but uh, there are a couple pieces I kept here. That's a Grubbs Gorgonian. I thought it's grown really well. It's growing into the flow, which I really like the look of, so I kept it. I got a purple frilly behind it. It's not really bothering anything, so I figured I'd just keep it. And also the really fluffy Wamas uh, Gorgonian that I got. It used to be up here where the green SPS is blocking everything, just fluffing it around, but I was able to uh, move it to the uh, frack mounts up back and just super glue a tiny bit just so that it'll hold steady. It does not get a lot of flow, so I may address that in the future by adding a, a gyre or another power head back there to bring on different type of flow. I would like to increase the flow back there as well as bring a little bit more flow to this portion because after, after tweaking the flow a little bit for the um, torch over there to make sure they're not getting crazy amount of flow. This part get once in a while get blasted by flow but not as consistently as I would like. See the tank will barely move sometimes so I don't like that. I would like them to at least be constantly mo uh, moving and I wonder if that's part of the issue with this polyp. Anyways, we will address this um, and we'll see how it looks in a couple of weeks. In the case of mushroom, we also got a couple back there here. Let's go back to the top down view. We got the sun kiss bounce that I got from Daniel a long time ago. Uh, looks like a split. And then we got what I call the uh, dumpster bounce or Oscar bounce in the black. That's the green one with these uh, really dull looking bubble. Uh, we just make a joke saying that oh, it's like a dumpster, dumpster, dumpster bounce, like budget bounce. And then we got the forest fire or at least some people call it the forest fire mushroom in the, in the middle as well. And I also have a lot of these um, firework cloth that I got from Daniel uh, in New York as well. And they've just been slowly taking over and I need to be really careful that they do not get onto the main rock because that's the last thing I want, having these guys compete with the SPS. And since we're over here, there's the clam as well. This is the rest of clam that I got from um, Clamania from Reef Blusa. It's been doing well. And if we look at the side, we can see the amount of growth that it has. See all the white shell? So for clam, you always want to see uh, some levels of these white growth to indicate that it is healthy, it is growing. And I got this since June, so it's only been four months. That's doing fantastic. The rest of clam seems to do really well in my tank. Maxima clam, not so much. From talking to uh, John from Clamania, it may have to do with the area that these clam come from. The Maxima clam come from really consistent water parameters in terms, uh, in, in terms of a lot of things and really low nutrient level versus Derissas, they come from areas like a lot more turbulence, a lot more fluctuation. So they are more, um, they're stronger against uh, fluctuation in water parameters and uh, nutrient levels and that's my tank. So I think Derissa is probably my, my answer in terms of the clam I want to keep in this tank. And at some point I would love to add a uh, Gigas. And because the Gigas is supposed to be even hardier than the Derissas. Uh, Derissas is not bad. Gigas is supposedly super easy, but of course uh, it's, uh, it's a lot harder to get now. Uh, but I think there are some kept the bread ones that may be coming out soon and I'm hoping to get my hands on one of those. Because those kind of clam seems to like my inappropriate tank a little bit more than the more appropriate clams. All right, all right. I know some of you guys have been waiting. Let's talk about SPS. Uh, SPS, to be honest, it's not too much to talk about because I haven't really done much to them. And maybe that's why they're doing well. They have just been, I keep using the term quietly growing because that's what they've been doing. Uh, I try my best to keep the alkalinity stable. Um, nutrients, I try my best, but not so much. But for the most part, alkalinity I'm proud of. It has been pretty rock solid. And I guess it shows in the SPS growth. In the span of like, especially the last half a year, it had just really been exploding in growth. For example, this green one right here, right? It probably doubled in size in the last two and a half months. And actually, let me push it back, like this guy. If you look back to maybe like last month's video where I did a top down, uh, the growth has been pretty significant from, from then to now. So these two guys I'm really, really happy with. The interesting thing is that I initially got these from Lin, immediately browned out in my tank, and they came in as a nice, decent sized frag, but they kind of just held steady for a very long time. And then after about a year or so in this tank, where I guess like the tank really stabilized and uh, um, and I don't know what else happened, man. Or maybe not, nothing else happened. That's why, that's why I started just taking off. Encrusted on the base and just took off. Same thing with a lot of these like little chunks. Like for example, right here in the middle, it's a tiny little piece, right? Before it started growing upwards, it started encrusting. That's what I keep hearing and that's what I'm seeing right now. And another one I'm really proud of is this golf bonsai that I got not too long ago from TSA. 
it's a, it's a nice sizable chunk, but now I actually see that encrusted onto the rock. Even that little bit that kind of sticks out, there's a little coral light that comes out on the uh, right side right there. It actually grew onto the rock and started growing upwards now. So this is awesome to see. And I have all these forest fire digitata and that's this orange manipura digitata right here. Um, some of these are broken off, like my f my fish. I think it's either the tang or one of the light tower amphias. Probably hit it and snap off the branch. Same thing with the green one. They snap off the larger branch. And for the forest fire, because I like it so much, I just super glue it onto the rock. I figure, okay, these guys are pretty easy to break off. If it actually gets to the point of growing into other uh, colony, first world problem for me, I'll just snap the whole thing off. Not a big deal. So I just kind of plant them there and see what happens. And same thing with the Kung Pao Monty. That's, that's the one that I'm really happy about too. Because I really like the look of this encrusting Monty. And I did not expect it to grow that fast. But already, it's already off the plug and encrusting onto the rock. So that's cool. Um, the Stylophora. That one right there is supposed to be a hot pink. At least it was in the, uh, in the seller's tank. And then it went back to a dark purple. Which is a cool color too. But I do want the hot pink back. And then it's really close to the rose spot of an enemy. So I may have to remount that to, some, to somewhere higher. Now the other SPS. I think they're going through their color morph right now in my tank. Let me bring you guys back up here again. I think this may be the Bill Murray from TSA. I'm not 100% sure. But I know I have a Bill Murray. Uh, so that's the mid middle guy right there, and to the left, I think that's the Thunderstruck. When the Thunderstruck came in, it's like a bright green, the whole piece. But now it's only the tips that's uh, the bright green. The body kind of dulled out a little bit. So it could be a combination of nutrients or lights. Uh, I'm not that advanced with SPS yet, so I don't really know how to identify the uh, cause and effect as, as good. So I'm just going to let them grow and uh, later on slowly learn. As I learn, I'll hopefully take you guys through the journey and share what I learned or I'll learn from you guys if you guys know. Um, what's what. Now over here we got some other SPS. We got the Master Yoda. That's a super line green one. We got a chalice that I got from Daniel from New York in the back as well. It's just been quietly growing. In the back there's like a mystery SPS that I got from Chevy as well. I'm really interested to see what color it grows into. And another piece I really like it's uh, the Magnificent. Let's see. Probably the front view is easier to see. And that's that piece right there. I got that from TSA as well. It's like out of corals, it kind of color morphed a little bit. It was a hot pink. It kind of dulled out a little bit. But I see that the uh, electric pink is slowly coming back in again. So I'm really excited about that. And we got the organ tort in the back. That came from Lynn. It's a nice chunky one. It did not seem to be growing much, at least at first, until I look back on photos and videos. Like, oh man, this guy actually grew a little bit too. The golden rod absolutely grew and that's this really gold one uh, that I got from Joker Corals a while back and that is also one of my favorite SPS because of how bright it is although in terms of the growth formation uh, the pattern right I actually really like the electric Miyagi torts because just look at this it's kind of like plating outward sorry I keep bringing you up and down up and down the growth pattern I just love this look it's just kind of like radiating outwards from the center stock this one, I believe, is also a Miyagi tort, but uh, the pattern is completely different. So I think, slowly, I am converting into a stickhead. My goodness, I never thought this day would come. But I see that once I kept the alkalinity steady, SPS, not terrible. Not terrible to keep. Um, but anyways, I, f I know that they have a much finer margin of error. Like, if you messed up, this. They just completely wiped out. They're not as forgiving. So I'm kind of like holding my breath. I keep thinking that, man, this disaster is going to strike tomorrow. But one step after another, it seems like they're just growing. And they're growing good. You may be noticing these two little frags right here. Uh, like I mentioned, some fish help me frag the corals. And these are the ones that I was like, hey, wait, how come this one look a little bit smaller or shorter today? And I'll see that, oh, a little chunk. It's on the, on the rock where it got knocked down by probably the hippo tank, which got large man this guy got large look at that jesus but yeah so those are the frags i should really put them on a plug and um do it appropriately but did not have time i just like all right yesterday i actually collected them yesterday i was like just, just stick it in this uh, hole for now and we'll address it in the future and maybe in a couple weeks you see that encrusted is like growing from there that'd be kind of funny actually all right last but not least let's talk about the fish and that brings us to the second mystery that I'm trying to solve here. First of all, all the fish are super healthy, doing super well, all really fat, especially again the hippo tank 
got large. Yellow Tang also really chunky. Um, Minerva Ras can pronounce it doing well. Everybody, everybody doing well, except for the last couple days, I have not seen my fairy Ras. The fairy Ras usually is out and about, happily swimming, never really bother anybody. I have not seen him. I'm just hoping that he is um, he is kind of like ducked down in the sand or hiding in one of the holes somewhere, but I have not seen him. And this is after I did the whole reorganizing of the rock work. I pulled that rock, put this chunk in, and I still see him swimming around the day after, and then he's gone. And I, I'm, I'm holding my breath. I don't know. Um, I mean, Raz has a tendency to kind of disappear for a couple days and then just randomly showing up as if nothing happened. Uh, some people made the funny comments of maybe they have portals between fish tank to visit each other's tank. That's why they disappear for a while. And I hope, I hope that's just the case and they'll just, he'll just pop back up one day. Um, but beyond that, I am pretty happy with my fish. Uh, I may, I'm, I may add some more fish. Well, actually, I'm, I'm having second thoughts because initially I thought I have low phosphate, no light traits, but then I realized after confirming some of the testings, I actually have slightly high phosphate and potentially slightly high nit nitrate. I haven't really double checked the nitrate yet, but I don't know. Um, I may at least add two or three small fish. I am thinking about adding those um, either green chromis or maybe a couple of those uh, coupon uh, blue damsels. Those are the blue damsels like yellow belly and yellow tail. I thought they looked absolutely gorgeous. But of course, whenever people think damsels, they're like, oh, aggressive, cheap fish. You don't want those. But I really like the look, so I may add them and they're supposedly not that aggressive compared to other damsels. It's either that or potentially a small tang of some sort that can help with uh, uh, like kind of LG on the rock work, kind of like these guys right here. Um, so I understand that different type of tang may specialize in different types of uh, LG. So if I were to add a small tank, it would be one that will have a bristle tooth to take care of uh, scraping LG off of rock. So we're talking talking about like Tomino tang, is that how you pronounce it? The one of like kind of like brownish of like orange fin tips or um, a coal tang if, if I can find one. But coal tang, I feel like gets a little bit large. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with having like three of those like larger tang in this tank. So I don't know. Still kind of on the fence. We'll see how it goes. But for the most part, the fish is doing well, except for the missing, missing fairy rats. I'm kind of still praying that it's going to randomly one day appear like a fairy. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, auto feeder is going off about three or four times a day for about a minute dumping all kinds of different food in there is a nice mixture of like freeze-dried food and flake food. So it seems to be enjoying. And whenever I'm close to the uh, tank, I'll just feed a little bit as well because I really enjoy watching them eat. So let's do that. I don't think I've ever showed you this. Um, I bought this because I thought it's so ridiculous. It's so pretentious, but I had to buy it to show you guys. And I was going to do a whole video on product that I bought so you don't have to and this is one of those like fancy freshwater fish feeder essentially you just put like pellets of flake and whatnot in here and then what you do is just like bloop, and then it'll drop some uh, pellets here and this is like 20 bucks or something like that but anyways yeah I got some credits with a marine depot back then that I had to use I was like okay I'm just shutting down I gotta buy something so I ended up getting this and I was gonna do a whole video on it but uh now with uh the way the timing is working out I'm not sure if I have time so that was a little preview of one of the many things that I bought that I bought so you don't have to oh man oh, look, all right all right the guys like those TDO pellets going crazy And you see how fast those fish are dashing around. And that's how these fish break off those SPS branches. It's kind of forced me to frag them. Otherwise, these guys would be much larger. Man, I hope that's not going to be a regular occurrence. All right, guys. And with the fish feasting, I guess it's time to say goodbye. This is kind of sad, really. I mean, I know I'll see you guys again really soon. But I've been doing this whole uh, Sunday release weekly video for so long that it's kind of weird. I don't know. It's like saying goodbye to some really good friends, to my reefing buddies. But uh, I hope you guys understand the decisions. And uh, number one, family first. And number two, I don't want to force content. That's the last thing I want. I don't want to be the slave of uh, making YouTube videos. I want to be the slave of my reef tank first and foremost, and then the YouTube redo, uh, if that makes sense. All right, well. Gotta go get ready for the trip. Time to go pack. Um, I'm probably gonna pack and then edit this video and hopefully I can make it in time.
for the Sunday release. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I would say I'll see you next Sunday, but that's probably not gonna happen. But I'll see you real soon. And once again, if you have not hit the notification bell on uh, my channel yet, I really appreciate it. So the next time I actually upload the video, you'll know when that happens. Brief the way you want to, my friend. This is a hobby and there are multiple ways to be successful and have a successful reef tank. Stay genuine, enjoy the hobby, and I'll see you real soon. Hey, hey, hey. don't worry, that budget build we talked about, that's still coming. <laughs>